frequency pollution that Stetzer and other experts have measured in homes across the country is in the frequencies that scientists know have a definite and measurable effect on human cells. Dr. Martin Graham of the Electronic Research Laboratory at Cal Berkeley released a white paper in which he deemed high frequency voltages entering homes and businesses on electrical wires a ubiquitous pollutant. The paper also detailed a method for detecting and measuring these undesirable high frequencies. A couple of days after Catherine Kleiber and her husband moved into a new home east of Madison, Wisconsin, she became ill and was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. I mean, I had so much short-term memory loss, and I just couldn't think. It was like thinking in a fog. It, and I, I graduated with an honors degree in zoology um, from the UW in Madison, and really enjoyed my academics. And so I found losing my mind <laughs> very, very hard. It was, I think, probably even harder than not being able to do anything physically was not being able to think. The Clibers decided to shut off most of the power to their home. I'm totally convinced that poor power quality is a cause of my problem because I don't feel bad if I'm not in a place where the power quality is a problem. If I'm at home with my circuits shut off and things under normal conditions, I'm pretty good, but if I go most other places, most places have power quality problems. If you plug in a meter and look, it's bad. And if they're not too bad, I feel, you know, pretty okay. And if it's really bad, I feel really bad. A few years ago, Marilyn Wilson of Madison began experiencing symptoms similar to Kleiber's. Memory problems, concentration problems, short-term memory problems in particular, I felt very, very tired, I could not sleep, my body hurt, I, um, the symptoms were just really, really terrifying to me and I thought that it felt like I had um, a brain tumor. After Dave Stetzer found high levels of electromagnetic pollution in her house, he installed a filter on the electrical service entering the home. My cognitive abilities are much, much better than what they were. I can remember phone numbers. I can remember best friends' names again. I can remember what I'm walking towards to do. I'm really grateful for my memory and concentration coming back. Several studies have demonstrated proven links between high-frequency radiation and a host of diseases. A recent study by Sir Richard Dahl, the British scientist who first established the link between smoking and cancer, shows a connection between high voltage power lines and childhood leukemia. In 1998, Dr. Neil Cherry of Lincoln University released a report correlating exposure to high frequency radiation and a number of conditions, including reproductive ailments, certain types of cancer, and chronic fatigue. A draft report by the EPA in 1990 recommended that electromagnetic fields be classified as a class B carcinogen, like formaldehyde or dioxin. For unexplained reasons, this report was never published in its final form. When Angela and Adam Topper moved into their new home in Downing, Wisconsin, they quickly found out that something wasn't right. My son, oldest son, Anthony, just all of a sudden he came in for a nap and um, I just thought he was cold or something because he was two and a half years old and um, or the flies were bothering him or something, I don't know, because his leg, his right leg was just shaking. He was on his belly and um, he, his right leg kept shaking so I got a blanket to cover him and here his eyes were kind of in like a dead stare kind of thing and his foaming at the mouth. The toppers had no family history of seizures and after extensive tests, doctors confessed they didn't know what had caused Anthony's episode. Shortly after that, Angela's other two children also experienced seizures. At one particular time, we had two hospitalized at the same time. They were, they were both in, um, Dustin was 18 months and Jocelyn was nine weeks old. The toppers had the health department test the water, air, and soil around their home. Those tests came back negative. 
But when Dave Stetzer took measurements in the home, he found an unusually high incidence of high-frequency electrical pollution. Placing electrodes between the countertop and the vinyl floor, he measured a low-voltage 60-cycle current, the same type of power that's generated by electrical utilities. Oscilloscope readings showed that riding on the 60-cycle current were high levels of spurious high-frequency energy. Just the fact that I've had three kids and I love children and it's the scariest thing in the world to go through. To watch them helplessly like have seizures and be in hospitals all the time. A National Electrical Safety Council publication clearly outlines a solution for alleviating ground currents. But so far, no utilities have taken action. And despite the growing body of research linking electromagnetic fields to illness, the electrical utilities and most state health officials maintain that the research is inconclusive and that ground currents and high frequency pollution aren't a problem. But a study published by EPRI, the Utility Industries Research Center, stated that low-level contact current may explain the reported associations of residential electromagnetic fields with childhood leukemia. We have gone to, you, to our utility repeatedly and it's most of the time it's either lies or we're misled. And I have given up all, all hope while the Revere's, Byrol's, Topper's, and others continue their around-the-clock struggles, the one thing they want most is a solution. People need to step up to this problem and take their responsibility seriously. If you know that this is something that's causing childhood leukemia, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, attention deficit disorder, and different kinds of cancers, people need to take this seriously and people need to step up to their responsibility and work collectively to fix this. Um, I've talked to many different dairy farmers throughout the state of Minnesota and when I hear their stories about the problems they're having with their cows, with their family's health, and with their struggles with the utilities, it sounds like I'm hearing our own story. They're just so similar, and it just can't be that people all over the whole state of Minnesota and Wisconsin and Michigan are all coming to the same conclusions just through sheer coincidence. It just couldn't happen.